did his part. Jesus already died for our sins. He says, I love you this much that I'm willing to die for you, and now it's your chance to come to me. Right? So we have hope in Jesus Christ. The second thing we have to look at is this. Where are we in life? How come I'm in this situation I am? And, and notice this. In a world like, that we like to blame everybody else, I just want to say this. We have to stop blaming other people for the way that we are feeling. Or for our uh, lot in life, where we're at. There's a lot of that going on today. Amen. A lot of people pointing the finger at each other, right? A lot of people saying, well, it's your fault, and, or it's my fault, or, or it's that person's fault, or it's my parents' fault, or it's the police's fault, or, or it's that person over there. Um, in order to have hope, we have to come to a place where we say, okay, well, what's my part? Where, where am I responsible for? Um, the fact is, everyone look up here for a second, nobody can meet all of your needs. Did you know that? Nobody can meet all of your needs. Your parents can't if you're younger. Your children can't meet your needs. Your grandchildren, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a career. You know, you, you had a career and many of you are retired now. Um, that can't be your hope. Because careers end, relationships end, friendships can end. We can't put our hope in other things. But the one thing that we can put our hope in is the thing that never ends, and that is God's love for us. Do you agree with that this morning? Amen. Are you happy that God loves you? Amen. Are you happy that God forgives you when you Amen. mess up? Yes. Are you happy that God can point you in a new direction? It takes honesty to open up to be like that with God. It takes uh, uh, taking on the responsibility that we have. I love what Adam and Eve said when God catches them. Right? You guys know it. Most of you know it. Take a look at the story. The man said, the woman you put here uh, with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. it. It depends on where you want to put the emphasis on this. It can go one of two ways. Notice this. It could be the woman's fault, right? I'm not going to comment on that. But he also says it, it's the woman you put here. <laughs> Have you ever blamed God for something? Amen. Okay. All right, honestly, that's a good thing. <laughs> the woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Now, I just want to say this. You could have had the worst parents in the world, and yet we're still responsible for our own actions and our own behavior. Something could have happened to you at work. You could have felt prejudice against. You could have felt whatever. Something didn't happen right. We are still responsible for how we respond. Not somebody else. God, um, God can help me through this. It's good to know that no matter where we're at in life, that He is going to provide a way towards hope. I love this verse in John chapter uh, 1, verse 8 and 9. It says this, If we say that we have no sin, then we deceive what? Ourselves. ourselves. We lie to ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love that. God gives us hope that no matter what we've done, no matter who we've blamed, if we've been putting the responsibility on other people and 
today you hear, I've got to take responsibility for myself. God forgives us when we ask Him to. I love that verse because I, that's a verse that I need daily sometimes. I need Him to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Hope. Let me give you the last one. We need an honest evaluation of our life. We need to be open to God. We need to take responsibility for our part. And the last one is this. We need to experience hope today and not later. We need to experience hope today and not later. You know, if I just got a better job, I would be happier. If I got a better girlfriend or boyfriend, I would be happier. If they're sitting next to you today, do not stare at them at this point. Okay. If I had a bigger church, I would be happier. Happiness comes from our relationship with the Lord. No matter where we find ourselves, no matter what's going on. I love this verse. Lamentations. It says, I have hope when I think of this. The Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They are new every morning. You know this morning, if you woke up today, and many of you did wake up today. <laughs> many of you did wake up. And the scripture says that the Lord's mercies are new every morning. His goodness is new every morning. What does that mean? It means every day you get another chance to do it better than you did yesterday. I love that. You know, sometimes we as Christians, we think we've arrived. And yet, the Apostle Paul says, look, I'm not done yet. I still am not where I need to be. Sometimes I do the things I don't want to do. And I don't know why I'm doing it, he says. And yet the scripture says uh, that the Lord's mercies are new every morning. Look up here for a second. If you're waiting for something in the future to make you happy, let me just say this. That might never come. Amen. But the Bible says you can have happiness today. You can have hope today. Even in the midst of pain and struggles. I have hope when I think of this, the Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They are new every morning. From the story of Adam and Eve, they chose sin over obedience, and we're doing the same thing nowadays. Take a look at this passage and see how uh, the rest of the story ends. It says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust of the, the, the dust all the days of your life. This is a symbol of total defeat. I have defeated you, Satan. I will put enmity or hostility or war between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Now notice what it says. He, well who's he? I, I believe the rest of the Bible points to Jesus. Look at what he tells Eve. He, uh, or the servant, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. You might wound him on the cross, but he will destroy your works. He will crush you. The power of sin and death is in his hands. <laughs> Jesus Christ makes it possible for us to be forgiven. A hope that was given in the Garden of Eden. It's because of Jesus we have hope today. If, if you get nothing out of this sermon, if you can't remember anything tomorrow, I want you to remember this. Jesus is the only one who can offer me hope. Nobody else. Nothing else. Jesus wants to give you hope. Look at this verse in 1 Corinthians 15. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection of the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given a new life.
life. I'm so glad God gave us a new life. Amen. Are you glad? Amen. Are you glad that one day when you go and leave this place, you're going to go to a better place? You're going to go and see those who went on before you? You're going to go see Imedo. I'm sure she's got a thousand stories already after being in, up in heaven in God's presence. She's got a story to tell you. One day, we're going to go see our loved ones again. We're going to be with Christ forever. There's hope. There's hope for all of us this morning. 1 Peter 1 3 says this In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have a new hope, a living hope. The next time you're depressed, you're sad, you're stressed out, you're worried, I want you to think about this. Because Jesus died, because he rose from the dead, we know that we have a living hope. Jesus is alive. We have hope in him. Uh, Jesus is not like some other religious leader who died and who stayed dead. He died and he rose so we can know he's the real God, the real deal. I love this last verse. It tells us who our strength and our hope come from. It says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. How many of you feel weak today? Just don't raise your hand. How many of you feel weak today? The scripture says the Lord will give you strength. How many of you are tired, exhausted, stressed out? Scripture says we will soar on wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. What is your hope in today? Is it in God or is it in something else? Well, the scripture says you and I can have hope this morning. I love the story of Adam and Eve. We, we kind of, we, it's one of those stories that we don't really look at a whole lot because. We read it, it's the first story in the Bible, we hardly ever go back to it, but that's a great story. Amen. You remember that they thought that they could be God themselves, and so they disobeyed. But God provided a way of hope through Jesus Christ. And so today, put your hope in Jesus. He's going to give you the strength you need to make it through today and tomorrow. Let's bow our heads for a I want to take a moment for you just to be honest with Jesus and tell him where you're at in life. Tell him what you're struggling with. Tell him where you need help. I'm sure that God might, might have brought one or two of you here just so you can hear this. Don't give up. Don't give in to discouragement. Father, I'm sure that there are people here today who are feeling beat up with life. There might be some who are depressed, sad. I thank you that you brought them here to hear this message about how you can turn their life around and give them a living home that will spring up from the side of them. Jesus, I pray that you would work in our lives today. I want to invite you to say a prayer. As I, as I say, you just follow along. You pray to the Lord. Side of you can say something like this. Dear God, you know exactly how I've been feeling. Today, I want to turn it all over to you. God, help me to be more aware that you're always with and that you're watching over me, even though I don't know it, even though sometimes I don't feel it. Thank you for working in my life to help me become everything you created. <laughs> if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, you could say something like this. I want to get to know you and follow your purpose for my life, Jesus. So today, as much as I know how I give my life to you, Help me to build a relationship with you so that I can have hope in today and tomorrow and in heaven. I 
put my trust in you. I know that you say that you'll never disappoint me. You'll always love me. So Jesus, thank you for going to the cross and dying for me so that I can be forgiven and go to heaven. Jesus, I give you my life today. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for these people. I ask that you be with all of them. Let's stand and sing. I want to. I want to give you the opportunity, though. I'm going to sit up here in the front row. If you would like me to pray with you or pray for you about something, I'd be happy to do that. As we're singing, just come on up, and I'll be happy to pray with you. Okay. God bless you. The cross.